Okay, physics. Um, so your assignment is due tomorrow on Tuesday. We're gonna have a test on sections 10.3 and 10.4. Again, just the math on Thursday. I wanna do just a quick review of what is in 10.3 and 10.4. I'm not gonna do any examples from it. I am gonna try and answer a couple of questions um, that were asked of me. The other thing I thought we might do is tomorrow, Tuesday, at 11 o'clock, because that's when our normal class time would be. Um, Tuesday at 11 o'clock, what I thought is, um, I'm gonna try Google Hangouts. I'm trying it with Math 12 on Wednesday, so you physics people will be my experiment people. Um, we will try Google Hangouts and see how that goes rather than Zoom. Um, Zoom for me kicks me out sometimes and is very kind of patchy because of my internet, so I don't know if I was hosting it, how it would go. I also don't know how Google Hangouts is gonna go, guys, but we can try. Um, so I thought at 11 a.m. tomorrow, Tuesday morning, um, I would do a video call with you guys and you guys could ask me kind of whatever questions you wanted to ask me and I would try and answer. Um, so we'd have like a question and answer period. Um, if you think you're fine and you don't need it, you don't need to come. It's not mandatory. I'm not making you show up. This isn't a you have to kind of deal. It's a, if you wanna try it and see how it goes, we can do that if you have questions, okay? Um, so in terms of what is in section 10.3 and 10.4, I so miss my podium. You have no idea. Like, I'm almost going to go into the school and steal it. Um, it'll fit in my truck. All right, 10.3. And yeah, I just put that on video. That's probably not good, right? Confessing you're going to steal something from a church. Sorry. All right, um, 10.3 and 10.4. I'm tired. I hiked for seven kilometers today. Um, so 10.3, the first thing we talked about was the idea of torque and static equilibrium. So torque is just the idea of rotational motion. So there's two types of motion. There's translational motion, which is uh, when you like move across a distance. And there is rotational mo motion, which is torque. Um, and torque is um, the lever arm distance, torque, is the lever arm distance times the force. The lever arm distance is always perpendicular to the force. Again, think about a door. Um, the door rotates on the hinges. Um, so the door, the door moves Okay, so the force, you're pulling and pushing, but you move across. So they are perpendicular to one another. Um, so, um, just trying to see. The other idea, okay, oh, and the other idea that was in here was the idea of the center of mass. Where is something center of mass? Because we said gravity works on something center of mass. Um, so, and the center of mass is just really where can the object be balanced? So if I was trying to balance this marker on my finger, Okay, I just found its center of mass because it's where I can balance it. If I put it down here, it's not gonna balance, it's gonna fall off my finger. So the center of mass is really, where can it be balanced, okay? And that really is where we consider gravity to be working. So we did a model problem in that one where we had a crane and we had a cable holding the crane arm up. We did a question like that um we did one 
with uh, the person holding the ball and the, the arm moving up and down. We did one with a painter up against the wall. So we did a couple of different ones there. Um, again, if you're looking for what kind of math question would I ask, pretty much anything like what I asked you on um, your homework. We talked about the idea of static equilibrium. Static equilibrium is when all the forces added together equals zero and all the torques added together equals zero, meaning the object's not moving. It's not moving translationally and it's not moving rotationally. And what that means is that everything should add up to be zero. Um, again, we did one with the fireman up going up a ladder, he was standing like two thirds of the way up the ladder. Um, the ladder hopefully is in static equilibrium because you don't want your ladder moving when you stand on it. Um, and we did questions with that. I find diagrams very, very helpful when we're doing those. Um, keep in mind, they do them wrong in the book. Remember that if for the last force, the normal force of the house on the ladder, they use cos and you should be using sine. Um, and I went over that in the video where I did the example. So we did one type of torque static equilibrium question where someone's basically standing on a ladder and the ladder's in static equilibrium. The other one we did is the kind where you have like a sign or a light or something hanging off a beam and there's a cable holding the helping to support it and there's the normal force of the wall or the pole on the thing we did one of those so heads up on a test on an assignment on an exam oh by the way there won't be exams right because letting the cat out of the bag, there won't be exams because we're not going back to school, all right? So we will have to do other things. Um, but just little hint, no exams this year. Um, so, but on an assignment, on a test, on something, I know, come back to me, you're still thinking about what I just said. Um, on a test, on an assignment, I will either ask you a question about a dude on a ladder or a girl, I don't care, somebody on a ladder, I will do that, or I will do a sign question. I will do one of the two. So you have to know how to do both because I'm not telling you which one I'm asking, but I'm telling you there will be one of them. Um, one of the questions that someone asked me was, how do I know where the pivot point is? How do I know where that's happening? Because they said, I believe the words were, I thought I had it until I got to 31. So I'm looking at 31 and 31, um, 31 was the diving board question. And if you think back to the diving board question, the diving board question said, you have a diving board, there's a fulcrum here, and there's a bolt holding it to the end. And, and someone said, I thought the bolt would be kind of the rotational point, the point at which it would rotate, but it turns out it's actually the fulcrum. Well, that's because the bolt is simply there to hold it in place. If you were standing on it, it wouldn't rotate around here. It would rotate around this fulcrum because that's where it's touching. If there's a fulcrum of some type, that's where it will rotate around. Um, most of the time, like in a ladder question or things like that, it's going to be um, so if you have a ladder question, so there's the ground, there's a wall, and there's a ladder, there is no fulcrum. There is no place at which that thing is balancing on. The thing, the thing that the ladder is balancing on is the ground, right? And if you take the wall away, from, it starts to fall. Um, 
this, the diving board, is actually balancing on this. Most people don't crawl under a diving board to see what's going on under there. Um, but if you have a diving board that is made of cement, like the ones that don't bounce, then yeah, your fulcrum point, your, it doesn't have a fulcrum. The pivot point would be back where the concrete is attached to the, the building or whatever it's attached to. Um, but on a spring diving board, on a spring diving board, the bouncy ones, what's actually happening, if you look underneath the diving board, although very few people do, if you look, because why? <laughs> but if you look underneath the diving board, it's actually bolted to the ground back here, but then there's like a spring right here that the diving board's attached to, and that's what it bounces on. So that is actually your fulcrum point. That's actually where your spring is coming from. That's where the rotation, that's where the bend in the diving board is coming from. So I don't know if that answers your question, um, but I hope it does. Nine times out of 10, you're not going to need to know that, but it, the pretty much the only scenario where you're going to have a, like a fulcrum or something like that is a diving board or a seesaw or something like that. That something, because a seesaw, doesn't pivot on its end, it pivots at the center. That's why it does this when you're on it, right? It doesn't, it doesn't just pivot from one end, it pivots at the middle. It pivots on that fulcrum. Um, so that's really the only scenario where your fulcrum is different from where it's attached to something, like where the ladder is, the ladder's not actually attached to the ground, but it'd be nice if it was, um, but sort of attached to the ground. So that's what's in 10.3. 10.3 is really talking about torque and static equilibrium. Those are the two. In 10.4, we talked about collisions and explosions. So there's a bit more going on in 10.4. I'm just looking for a place to put my markers down, sorry. Um, 10.4 was really us talking about collisions and the fact that when you have collisions, there's so much going on, collisions or explosions, there's so much going on that you really can't um, look at the explosion or the collision itself. What you have to do is you have to look at the momentum exactly before and exactly after the collision or the explosion. And you can't look at just momentum because everything's happening at angles. So you have to look, you have to split it up into X components and why components. It's why do the test on section 10.1 and 10.2 first, because that's where they really bring in that idea of components. I wanna make sure you get that before you get to here. So now that you're here, um, you really have to be able to break things down into their components. So you look at your, your um, momentum in the X direction, you look at your momentum in the Y direction, and then you look at your momentum overall by doing your um, Pythagorean theorem and tan of y over x to give you the angle. Um, so we talked about collisions um, and we talked about explosions. Explosions really is the same thing um, where they go off, the pieces go off in three different directions and you're gonna look at the x components and the y components separately. Um, and then we talked about elastic versus, oh, sorry. Then we look at elastic versus inelastic collisions. And uh, the only difference is um, the momentum is still the same before and after. What's different is in an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved, which means if you figure out the kinetic energy just before and just after, they'll be the same. Whereas if it's an inelastic collision, the kinetic energy before and after will be different. And then we moved into the really fun questions at the very end, which brought in everything. Um, so they were the inelastic collisions. Um, I've already said, but I'll say it again. Um, the one with the ballistic pendulum. 
Um, we did a few of those, so you should be familiar with those. The other one that I tend to kind of lean towards because um, it's the same steps every time, to be honest. Um, I'm trying to make it easier on you. I really, really am. Um, and that's the one like with the boulder going down the hill, hitting the shack, and then the, the two things sliding across the ice. Something like that, or one car hitting another car and sliding down the road. Something like that. Um, so those were number 43 and 45 on page 525. So again, I'm not going to sit and go over a bunch of those because I've done videos on all of them. So you can go back and rewatch those videos. It's the bonus of videos. There are some good things. There are some good things. Um, so you can go back and rewatch those if you need to. Again, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, I will try and do a video call over Google Hangouts. I, again, I don't know how that's going to go. Haven't tried it yet. Um, we'll see. And um, you can ask me anything you want to at that point. Um, and I will try my best to answer those questions at that point. Your assignment is due by end of day on Tuesday. You're going to have a test on the math portion of 10.3 and 10.4 on Thursday, and then it will be your Easter weekend. All right, so I think that's it. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye.